evening, everyone. Let's try that again. Good evening, everyone. That's much better. That is a deaf, probably figured it out. I'm Dr. Tom Ward, principal of Marshwood High School. I'd like to officially welcome you here this evening for our graduation commencement exercises. To pull off a graduation like this, I, I do need to thank a number of people who have uh, put many hours into getting our wonderful facilities here ready for this proud, proud moment. I need to thank my custodians, my groundskeepers, my uh, secretarial staff, all of my staff at my high school, my faculty. I'd like to especially thank uh, the great people I have up here on the platform tonight. I'm surrounded by my very talented administrative team and our wonderful superintendent and a tremendous uh, hard-working board of directors. Let's give them all a nice round of applause. And of course, I want to thank all of you, the parents, friends, relatives, supporters that are here today to honor these graduates. And I thank you for your patience trying to get on to our facility as uh, we did fill up very quickly. I know a number of you had to park on Route 236. I know there's still a number of you out on 236. <laughs> Hopefully they'll get here before we start to pass out the diplomas. With that, it is with great pleasure I bring our first speaker up here, Jennifer Hamill. But the future is, 
and always will be an unknown. And in reality, the present is all we have to live for. As I look upon our class tonight, I see many faces. I see the faces of those who spent the past four years in a state of constant stress over grades and competing with the achievements of others. I see the faces of those who endured another stress over whether or not they would graduate at all. I see faces of those who have struggled to achieve their objectives for the future and did whatever they could to see those objectives come to life. I see the faces of those who have struggled with fitting in and finding their own place in the class of 199. I see faces that have been bombarded with queries over the past few years as to what they are going to do with the rest of their life. I see faces that still have no idea. I see faces that cannot wait for high school to be over, and I see faces that never want it to end. All of these faces, though quite different in their distinct high school experiences, have arrived at the same place. I say now to all of these faces, you've made it. You have accomplished the goal that we started 12 years ago to achieve. Now it is time to let go of your fears, your stress, your anticipation of the future, or your regret for the past. Let go of the need to impress others or live up to their expectations. Let go of the panic of passing enough credits to sit in these chairs. Let go of the petty rivalries and grudges of the past. Let go of the anxiety of what is to come. You are sitting here for a reason. You earned this. Live in this moment and let go of everything else. Now you should feel a weight being lifted off your shoulders. Now you can enjoy this unique experience, sitting among all your peers, listening to advice and memories from some of your fellow classmates, and being in the here and now. Some moments in life are meant to be remembered forever, this one being no exception. Soon we will be receiving our diplomas and officially graduating from high school. As we walk from our seats to the podium, we should be fully aware that this moment is what we have been waiting for all our lives. As we hear our names from Dr. Ward and receive our diplomas and shake Ms. Jensen's hand, we must be fully aware of how proud they are of us and how proud we should be of ourselves for what we have accomplished. As we walk back to our feet, we should be fully cognizant that we are now high school graduates and that we have completed something truly spectacular. This moment is where we all should be living right now. Hopefully, for all of us, there will be many wonderful and memorable moments to come as we grow up and start careers, families, and new traditions. These important moments should be favored, of course, but let's not forget to live every moment as if it were the most important of our lives. Our lives are changing as we speak, and hopefully we will all leave this ceremony tonight as changed individuals. I hope that my classmates and friends all will go home and thank their families for the support they have shown leading up to this moment. I hope we will all wake up tomorrow and take time to observe and enjoy the world around us. Maybe take a walk and reacquaint ourselves with our backyards or our neighborhoods, knowing that this is where our home is and this is where we spent most of our time getting ready for this moment. I hope we all will spend each day aware and mindful of our lives and the miracle that has taken place by being alive in the world right now. I hope we all will someday realize our uniqueness and the gifts that we have to offer to society. We are all capable of living in this moment and taking it with us wherever we go in life. We are all capable of achieving great things as long as we slow down and enjoy the moments that we experience along the way. Live not in the past or the future, but only for right now. For as the great
late philosopher Emerson once wrote, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Congratulations to you all, and good luck in all of your future moments. Thank you.
stay here in Marshwood for another year or two to further his education. Although he is not graduating with us this evening, we would like him to understand and realize the profound impact he has made on our lives. The class is presenting Nick with the Marshwood Hawk emblem, framed in the signatures of the graduates as a symbol that Nick has been and will always be a member of the class of 2001. Thank you for being a part of high school and good luck in all that you do.
great success or passion for this subject or have worked tirelessly and for the very special awards. And let me backtrack this moment because I didn't call attention to our teachers who are truly some of the most gifting and caring individuals that we have in our community. And I'd like you to join me in thanking them. And not just from our high school, but from our elementary and from our high school.
is in the area of business technology. The book is The Beatles Anthology by The Beatles. The recipient is Dick Johnson.
concern. I've always loved to speak in front of people. I'm a fairly good writer, and I can certainly talk loud enough. <laughs> However, when I sat down at the computer to begin writing this speech for the first time, my mind went completely blank. I had no idea how to start a speech, and I really didn't have a topic. The block lasted for weeks. As soon as I started to start to type something, I just stared at the screen while pushing the delete button to make it appear to my mother as if I was doing work. <laughs> it was not until I talked to my aunt about a week ago that I realized my real problem. I was afraid of writing a bad speech and completely humiliating myself in front of everyone. Once this quirk of character was revealed to me, I was finally able to just sit down and record what I was thinking without any problems. Lucille Ball once said, Love yourself first, and everything else will fall into line. You really have to love yourself to get anything done in this world. Acceptance and confidence in oneself is one of the most important aspects in a person's life. My grandfather was one of the most influential men of my young life. When, when he was a child, he grew up on a farm, and after returning from fighting in World War II, his only dream was to run a farm on the plains of California with his three brothers. After marriage and three kids, one being my father, the unthinkable happened. My grandmother was diagnosed with polio, placed in an iron lung, and in an instant, his dreams were shattered. Nevertheless, he picked up and moved on. and worked many jobs as he tried to support his family and wife for the next 25 years until her death. When I talked to my grandfather over the years, he expressed nothing but enthusiasm and confidence for his life and the decisions he made. Without the ability to act confidently in what we believe is right and just, little can be done in this world. And it's disbelief in oneself that will lead to some of the greatest changes in the world. If Martin Luther King had struggled with his ideas and not believed that he can improve the world, you were never spoken out against the British Society of the 1960s and provided numerous opportunities for people with different skin color. Where would American World Society be if Susan B. Anthony had not stood up for the woman of her time? These are just two of the people that believed in themselves and made a difference in the world that would be noticed for years to come. Unfortunately, in far too many cases, the confidence that a person has in his or herself is clouded by competition. This competition was often present as I went through high school. Competition for grades, class standings, and different awards seemed to overwhelm my class. On many occasions, I would see myself and class classmates become disappointed when someone else surpassed us, whether it was in sports, academics, or the everyday intricacies of life. Self-value should only be gauged by one's own personal achievements and effort. It is when one achieves personal greatness that he or she finds the purest happiness. If our goal is only to speak or surpass another person, we will be continually disappointed. This aggressive competition only creates hostility among friends, disappointment at failure, or the hollow sensation of feeling superior to another human being. Achieving personal greatness is not necessarily synonymous with achieving perfection. Although it's admirable to try to achieve perfection in every endeavor that one undertakes, one will never be able to avoid minor mistakes and flaws. It is when one recognizes and accepts these flaws and perseveres that personal greatness may be achieved. Michael Jordan is considered by many to be the best athlete of our century. He is synonymous with basketball, last second wins, and pure athleticism. However, Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team, and he certainly didn't make every basket or win every game. Michael Jordan was not afraid to take that chance, and neither should we. Although we don't make every shot that we attempt, we miss 100% of the shots that we don't take. Another more important aspect to the fulfillment of oneself is the acceptance and tolerance of others. It is 
It's only when we are able to recognize others' talents, along with their imperfections, that we will be able to complete our development. Differences in philosophy, race, color of skin, or religion are inconsequential when compared to connection that can be formed when all biases and presumptions are ignored. How many times have we heard the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have done unto you. Think about how this basic rule has applied to our lives and tried to live according to its words. The 20th century epitome of this inability to accept others was a holocaust. School shootings hate crimes the war could be easily avoided if people will learn to accept others for who they are and tolerate differences. As we head off to college and adulthood, we will be faced with many challenges, people, and issues. We will be forced to compete for jobs, and many times we will fail. However, it is not what position we hold in the company, what college we attend, or the amount of money we possess that is truly important, but who we are that really counts. Like my grandfather, I hope we will all develop acceptance of others, our families, and ourselves. We must strive for greatness, accept all people, be the best that we can be, but most importantly, be true to ourselves. Thank you.
here is no exception uh, for this recipient. The reason we didn't present it at our senior board assembly was that she was away visiting the university that she will be attending in the fall. And when this young lady came to us as a freshman and sophomore, uh, we really uh, were concerned. We uh, tried to do our best to help her, to uh, bring her along and support her, and it definitely paid off as she went from being an individual who really wasn't sure where she was going, what she wanted out of life, to uh, finding direction, finding a vision, and accomplishing that goal. And I know this will just be the beginning of the accomplishment of many, many goals. And at this time, I'd like to present our coveted watch award to Jessica LaRanger. And then, 
to top that up. Not that that was the best of this morning. To show that they're charitable, I went down to the lower lobby and found they had left me a new car. Jennifer Lynn the 
Bristol, Stephen Lawrence Roof, Charles Wayne Burkett, Jessica Susan LaRanger, Nicole Bernice Fermanis, Cassandra Ann Penrod, Tracy Starr Scott, Patricia Claire 
Bailey. Stacy Jean Grassy. Sarah Ida Soldier. Zachary T. Welch. Julie Lita Paika. April Marie Drysdale. Brandy Lee Kelly. Heather Lynn Kimball. James Stahlmecker. Janisha Lakeisha Townsend. Marissa Sue Boston. Kelsey Rose Green. Jamie Town. Natalie Lindsay Dane. Joshua Carl Brooks.
Stephen John Rezac, Jr. Sarah Ann Lane. Megan Jean Bree. Michael Adam Pitt. Aaron Lorraine Shea. Katrina Deborah Scribner. Michael Gary Percy. Sarah Kate Buckley. Tiffany Lynn Collins. Lauren Elizabeth Unterberg. Lori Ann Arnell. Kristen Marie Shalifer. Tanya Lee Gilman. Jessica Lynn Allen. Patricia Ann Warnikowski. Valerie Ann Cook. Sherry Rick.
clearly remember the fall of 1997 when we arrived for our first day at the old Marshall High School for the simple fact that it seems like only yesterday. Since then, we've made friends, some enemies, shared happy times and sad wins and losses, and have even changed schools. But perhaps among all these, it will be the good times that prove to best illustrate our future good old days. As a class, we may remember group activities such as dances, pep rallies, prom, spring plays, winter carnival, and even everyday activities such as lunch. <laughs> we'll also remember the little things like the lunch lady who can count out your change before you even buy your food. <laughs> and the meatballs that have been stuck high above the old Marshwood High School cafeteria for years. <laughs> or the long, tiring summer days of double sessions for soccer. Over our four years here at Marshwood, we've learned that you can never know what to expect, especially from people. Sometimes, a teacher is a completely different person once you really get to know him or her. Mrs. Burnham, for example, is always swapping out for the kids. For example, her voice echoes through European streets as she screams, Skip! The kids need you to slow down! <laughs> as Mr. Cousins drifted away from the group at his speedy walking pace. And Dr. Ward, our principal for the four years we were at the school, has the amazing power to silence an entire auditorium with a simple wave of his hand. And somehow he manages, even when furious, to never lose that bright, friendly, Kramer-like grin. <laughs> And only we students have the privilege to hear about Mr. Bowden's fishing and hunting adventures, or stories about the infamous naked Justin, or see him attempt to kill a bumblebee in the back of his AP history classroom using a giant rolled-up poster. <laughs> Mrs. Tugel's passion for teaching is clearly displayed in the elaborate, real-life experiments she designs for her students. Who knew that there was a top secret government chemistry lab hidden in her classroom? But not really, it's just pretend. <laughs> After having Mr. Cousin for English for two years in a row, you might think that classes begin to get monotonous. On the contrary, we are not only continuously impressed by his vast amount of knowledge and enormously gargantuan vocabulary, but we are also shocked by his amazing flexibility. If he ever decides to stop teaching, I'm sure he can make a living teaching yoga. We witnessed firsthand Mr. Brisson mourn the tragic loss of one of his exotic Chilean cockroaches after Tom Sloan so savagely murdered it in his backpack. I've never seen a man so broke up and depressed. In fact, I'd like to have everyone join me in a moment of silence as we remember the life of that poor creature whose life has taken much too soon. I said silence. Freshman year, we saw Mr. Cowan's instinctive rescue skills when he saved Brendan Flavin from a spilled beaker of boiling water by courageously removing the victim's shirt. He then led him throughout the school hallway to the safety of Hilda Howell, our school nurse, while intimidating seniors nearby yelled out, Put your shirt back on, muscle. <laughs> After having Mr. Tangway for a soccer coach, I, as well as my teammates, learned that he has other skills besides his infamous flip throw. We found that he has the ability to metaphorically connect anything to the game of soccer. <laughs> this includes geese, ex-girlfriends, and giant concrete structures on Mount Agamemnon. <laughs> he even managed to make everything come together by relating both our lives and our soccer season to a blob of Play-Doh as it rolled across the locker room floor. For you, Mr. Pennyway. <laughs> what would our high school?
will experience C without C's unique personality. We would like to thank all of Marshall's teachers, those who have had us in class and those who have not. For, though the job is not easy, the hours are long, the salary is not high by any means, and the cafeteria food is only sometimes delicious. These people have given us all the precious gift of knowledge in some form or another by choosing the most generous and noble of careers. We must also recognize our other teachers, the parents and loved ones whose support and love has brought us here today. To all of our teachers, thank you from the class of 2001.